Hi, I'm Jeremy, Cash at Canyon Hills. I reels laughing. Cut. We'll fix that in post. Hi. You look at it so weird. You're like. Hi, my name is Jeremy, and I'm a pastor at Canyon Hills. What did you start at Canyon Hills? Oh, I started up a room. <laughs> yeah. In the 1900s. Hey yo. Yeah. <laughs> So how do we close this gap between heaven and earth? How do we walk out our, our Christianity and our uh, relationship uh, in the kingdom of God and bring that kingdom of heaven that we all want and bring it down to earth? I was thinking about, um, man, who are the, the people that I know that are like the most heavenly? Who have like walked that out and done that? Obviously for me, my uh, grandpa's on both sides and anybody who knows me knows that they are probably the most impactful people in my life and they've uh, changed my perspective pretty much on everything. And so, um, you know, one of my grandpas, uh, his name was, was Samuel and uh, I named my dog Sam. My wife's pregnant, she's having a kid next month. We're naming my my firstborn child, Sam. Uh, you know, he was, he, it's because he was a big influence and for different reasons really for my other grandpa. My other grandpa, uh, Floyd, was just an Oki from Oklahoma from a small town. You could probably walk around this town in like 10 minutes. He lived on a, just this little farm and I spent a lot of time growing up with him and he was uh, a guy that loved fishing and so he kind of took me fishing when I was a kid and I would go spend the summers uh, over with my grandpa and I was a little bit of a uh, crazy kid wanting to take things apart and burn things down. Uh, so my parents would just give me to my grandpa and let him take care of me. So I spent a lot of time with my grandpa uh, and myself and just nothing, just nature, just sometimes like hours of silence. Conversations as deep as you could probably have with a seven or eight year old. But one of the things I noticed about him that his Christianity wasn't something that he just he just did. It was really something that was related to who he was. Really, it's it's about who we are and who we're becoming, and not just what we do as as Christian. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, our works matter, and what we do matters. If you think about Revelation and Jesus writes uh, these letters through John and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He writes like letter after letter after letter. He's like, I see your works and I see your good deeds. And so like those matter, but um, they're also a reflection of who we are. I think this plays out um, so well in scripture and specifically with the early church. Acts 1.8 uh, is this verse that says, you, uh, when the Holy Spirit has uh, come upon you, you will receive power to be my witnesses and through Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. The important word that kind of gets lost in there is uh, this idea that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll have power to, to be. And I think before Jesus asks us to do, he asks us to be. And so I would just ask you guys, um, man, who, who are you becoming? Who are you becoming when, when no one else is around? Who are you um, becoming when no one's looking, when it's just you and silence? We reproduce who we are, and if we want to bring heaven to earth, and if we want to close that gap, man, I think it's gonna have a lot to do with, with who we are, with our connection to Jesus, um, not just Sundays, but actually in um, in the quiet moments and the moments when nobody else is around. I think if you look at the book of Acts in the early church and especially like um, Acts 19 and the, the idea of the church of Ephesus, one of the things you see is that that kind of life reproduces a messy church sometimes and it's wild. And I think we have this idea that when heaven comes and meets earth, things like absolutely fall into perfect place. 
but heaven's gonna be a pretty crazy place. There's gonna be a lot of languages and a lot of different tribes and a lot of different people that are gonna look different than you and me. And I think that's, uh, that's an important thought that when heaven comes to earth and when it meets and when we close that gap, uh, it might not look like we think it's going to look. And so we've gotta prepare our, our hearts for that. In that verse in Acts 1-8, I think that's exactly uh, what that verse is saying. It's, we will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, even Samaria, even that area that is full of people that are not like us, even the area of people that we might not prefer, that we might not get along with, or have a lot of respect for even. If we want um, the earth to look like heaven, we've got to start bringing in those people from the outside that might be a little messy, might not look like us, or talk like us, or walk like us, because that's absolutely what heaven is about.